a bought controller and a bought signal. Now, the reason these exist is primarily for fetch. You create a fetch, you pass it a signal, and if that's a long running fetch and the user wants to cancel it, you can just call controller.abort and that associated signal will die and the fetch will stop. Perfect, great. But did you know there's a bunch of other reasons you might want to use it too? So let's go through them. Number one is just for aborting uh, legacy stuff. So while fetch supports the signal here, we can't pass it through to a thing like a WebSocket. So in this case, we can kind of wrap up the WebSocket like this and abort it later. And that means that we have the same nice idiomatic interface for canceling something, um, you know, based on a user click or whatever. Number two is for event handlers. Now we all know when we add an event handler, you've got to hold on to it so you can remove it later. But instead I can actually ignore it, throw it away, but pass my signal in here. And so then my controller, when I call abort, that event handler will be removed automatically for me. Number three is for use in your own life cycles. Now I really like this because it kind of encourages you to write objects in a really nice idiomatic way that is really easy to use. So I've got a thing doer, it does some stuff and I pass it a signal. When it's done, I just call abort. And then I know the contract says that the object is no longer usable and that I can tell that from the outside or I can control it from somewhere else without having to hold onto the object and call stop, just like an event handler or um, a legacy object like the WebSocket. Number four is for hooks. Now, if you write React code, you might know that what you do in use effect is controversial and simultaneously entirely your business. Now, doing async work here is tricky and people typically get it wrong. The right way to do it is to use an abort controller. Now, this is a bit ugly. You might want to wrap this up in another hook, but fundamentally what we do is we create an abort controller and abort it in the destructor code when the you know, effect is called again. So in that way, we can do all this stuff, all this work here and know that if the effect gets run again, because the um, input value's changed, that we know that it's going to be canceled and that the fetches or whatever you do will uh, shut down gracefully. That's it. Thanks for listening. Read the blog post. There's some more content in there. See you later.